So this is what we are going over last time. Examples, um, single lens examples. Of applying the lens equation, let me write down my equations that I'm going to use here. So you guys have seen the thin lens equation. 1 over object distance plus 1 over image distance is equal to 1 over focal length. And I explained last time that I really prefer to be dealing with the lenses because it's easier to draw diagrams for lenses. So we are looking at three um, categories of examples that I was claiming were three comprehensive categories. So let me draw them again, and we will go through them in order this time. So example one is it's with a converging lens. And the object distance is greater than the focal length. So here's the lens. If uh, this is the focal length, then the object is placed somewhere out here, for example. Um, and uh, you guys saw the example two and three, so we'll get to those. But let me just go through each example one at a time. So um, when you have a question like this, technically you can do it without drawing any diagrams. It's a sort of, I don't know, trusting, um, trusting this equation. So you could do this question. Um, by, all right, you have object distance. This is object distance here. Let me um, get some numbers to plug in so that I have something concrete. I guess, let's say that the focal length is 10 centimeters. And object distance, does it look like 15 centimeters maybe? Yes, I want to be close. It doesn't have to be exact, but I just want to be close. 15 centimeters. So the question would be, the, I, we think, or I think, the image is going to form somewhere here. There will be image here. So the question is, all right, how far is the image distance? Okay. And if you trust this equation, then this is actually a pretty easy question to answer. You have one equation, one unknown. So you go through algebra and solve it. Let me do that quickly. So I have, oh, where do I want? Let me do the algebra here. Wait, do I want? Uh, let me do the algebra here. So this is my lens equation. 1 over do plus 1 over di is equal to 1 over f. I want to solve for di. So move this over. So I get 1 over di is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over do. I want to take the reciprocal. So I guess I should combine this fraction here. This is equal to, um, so the common denominator, common denominator f times do, f times do. And so do times 1, do minus f times 1, f. That's the combined fraction. Now take the reciprocal. That will give you the image distance. So the image distance, di, is equal to f times do over do minus f. You will do this algebra so many times as you're going through that homework set, maybe about a dozen times or so, um, which is good. Uh, I mean, algebra, I feel like there's there's always something to gain from algebra practice. Um, let me plug in the numbers. I'm going to skip the units because they will simply cancel out. The centimeters will cancel out. So I'll say 10 times 15. Oh, wait. Um, well, one factor of centimeters will cancel out, and I'll be left with one remaining factor of centimeters. Divided by uh, 15 minus um, 10. 
centimeters. So it's 150 divided by 5, ooh, 30 centimeters. Um, all right, so that's uh, my answer for the image distance. So apparently, if I draw this correctly, my image is supposed to be at somewhere here. So this is how far away my image will be, <laughs> di equal to 30 centimeters. And you know, that's okay as far as finding how far away the image will be. And if you are trying to do the demos that I showed you last time where I was trying to form a focused image of the filament on the whiteboard, that's kind of all you need. But there's really, there's one thing that's lacking here. And that lacking thing is, suppose someone asked you this question. The image that's going to form somewhere here, is it going to be an upright image or inverted image. Some of you know from your reading it's inverted. How do you know it's inverted? Hmm? Uh, you are bringing in a formula that I have not yet introduced. So Dilang is trying to tell me that linear magnification m is given by minus di over do, and since this is negative, um, that but. We are going to get to this. <laughs> so suppose you didn't know this formula yet because we haven't talked about it yet. By the ray trace, by the geometry. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go into ray tracing because if you're trying to, based on this thin lens equation, try to figure out all the details about this image, there are some things that you are not going to be able to figure out. So the thin lens equation, it gives you the distance. That's what it's in terms of, that's what it gives. But everything else, it really only comes from drawing the diagram. So this is why I'm, even though I know where the image will be, kinda, I'm going to do my ray, tra the, do my ray tracing to locate the image still. So let me draw my two principal rays. As a reminder, um, so I, I guess you can define three principal rays but I, um, I usually draw only two, because I'm afraid the third one won't come out right. <laughs> so I'll only draw two. So the first ray comes in parallel, and how does it go out? So it, first ray, it comes in parallel to the axis, and how does it go out after going through the lens? Yeah, it goes through the focal point, and goes through focal point. Um, so let me draw that. Trying to draw this as accurately as possible. Uh, all right, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, second is it goes, uh, goes through middle of lens and as, as it goes through the middle of the lens, do people remember how it goes? goes through the middle, let's say straight. It doesn't bend. So, let's see. Somewhere here. I don't know, good enough. <laughs> so if you did it with a, a straight edge and did it very, with a perfect precision, then you should end up somewhere here. And what that point, what that intersection, that point tells you is that this point, the light rays from this point they all come together to a focus here. So when you are looking at these light rays from here, these light rays will look like they are coming from this point. So you will see a sharp real image at this point. So let me sketch out the rest of the image here. So what the rest of the image will look like is um, this tip of the arrow and the rest of the arrow. So this is what the image looks like. And that's why it's inverted. Yep. And once you have this diagram, then you have what you need to derive the magnification formula that Dilan knew from reading. <laughs> so let me draw the auxiliary figures that will let you derive the magnification formula. These are the auxiliary figures. 
this triangle here. and this triangle here. By the way, everyone here um, familiar with the concept of magnification? Like making something greater by some factor. So if I want you to define a magnification for this lens, how would you want to define it? Like, um, let's see. Yeah, let me just leave it there. So how, how would you want to how would you want to define magnification? M. What two things um, do you have whose size you are concerned with? Yeah, size of the object. The distance you are looking at. Uh, well, what do you mean about what? I, what do you mean by distance? Uh, I guess I'm just thinking of actually looking through a magnifying glass up to just a certain distance in order to get it to be a certain size. Uh huh. Yeah, we'll talk about that. What you see through magnifying glass, that's going to be um, something called the angular magnification. Here, uh, we are dealing with a linear magnification. We are dealing with, OK, so I have this object over a certain size. And when I look through this uh, lens here, this object, whatever I see through the lens, it doesn't appear to be this thing of, I don't know, 10 centimeters or whatever. Well, one, its location will change. But after having accounted for that, what I look through this lens will appear to be an actually different size. So what, what is it that I'm seeing when I look through the lens? I'm not really seeing the object, right? Yeah. What am I seeing? Picture or image hmm? the virtual. Not virtual image. Well, I, it, well, it, it's this image, right? Whenever I look through the lens, what, I'm, what my eyes perceive is the image. It can be virtual. It can be real. So what I'm seeing is this image here. So when I'm talking about the magnification, I would want to know how the size of the object was magnified into the size of the image. So let me just give you some labels. Um, let's say this is my object height. And let's say this is my image height, height of the image. So I might say my magnification m is the ratio of these two. Ratio of the height of the image divided by height of the object. Good. And uh, we are actually going to allow this magnification to be uh, positive or negative. So um, this hi here as drawn, this should actually be a negative number because it's going, um, the object started out upright, and it's going below the axis. So we are going to say this is a negative number. When we do it that way, this magnification can be used to tell us if an image is upright or inverted. Yeah? OK, so this is the definition we are starting out with. But this will be very inconvenient definition to use, because then you will have to know the size of the object, you will have to know the size of the image. And um, do you feel like this magnification should depend on the size of the object? Like if I used half as tall of an arrow, would my magnification still be the same? Right? Yeah. The image will be half as tall, so that magnification will be the same, right? So even though this is how we define it, we won't really use this a lot. And this is where these auxiliary figures are helpful. This right triangle here, and this right triangle here, they share a feature in that one side of this right triangle is the height of the object. And one side of this right triangle is the height of the image. How are these two triangles related? Can you see anything that says 
Those are not just the two random triangles. They actually have some relationship to each other. Not congruent, similar. Somebody said similar. Yeah, similar, right? Um, they are different sizes, but you see that these two angles are the same. So it's right triangle, so all the other angles are the same, so they are similar triangles. Which means, if you know the other sides, and we do, this side here is the object distance. And this side here, this side here, is the image distance. You can say that the ratio of the sides are the same, or I guess um, making things easy for myself, I can say um, ratio of this side to that side is equal to ratio of this side to this side. Okay? So we would say this magnification, um, this is the definition, but we would say, all right, we can see that it's numerically equal to image distance over the object distance. Now, you might wonder, if you are looking at the formula in the textbook, other than this swapped error, um, it has this minus sign. Should we have a minus sign here? Yeah. So here, I said that the image height, I'm going to let that be negative. Here, can I just say I will let image distance be negative? No, no because looking at the thin lens equation, image distance was positive. And this positive sign actually has a meaning that we are going to go over really soon. So here, image distance is going to be a positive number. So we put the negative sign with the formula. That's where this formula comes from. Okay. All right, let me start building the table of sign convention. Um, it's uh, worth uh, presenting it systematically, particularly because of all the textbooks I have used, it's not the, this is not the fault of OpenStax textbook. Even Gian Cole had this unknowingly, wrong is not the right word, unknowingly confusing. I feel like I have a way of describing sign convention that's uh, much um, more universal. So let me try to build a table of sign conventions. So this example one is the example where sign of all these three quantities, object distance, image distance, and the focal length, they are all positive as you've seen with the numbers here. So let's just use that as a starting point, and I will try to describe when they may become negative. So object distance, image distance, and focal length. And I will try to spell out the conditions under which they are either positive, which is what we are seeing right now, or the conditions under which they are negative numbers. Yeah. Um, I guess, I, I think we might have enough information to say when the image and the image distance and focal length are positive. When would you say focal length should be positive? Like what do you know about this arrangement that, um, would it be different from the other example that we looked at last Thursday? Converging yeah. yeah, converging, sorry. It was a bit of a vague question. It's a converging lens. So when you have a converging lens, um, it could be done by, uh, some of you are asking about concave convex last time. Uh, I, th there's a reason I stay away from concave convex terms. Because here, it's the convex lens that gives you a converging configuration. When you're dealing with the mirrors, it's the concave lens that's a converging mirror. So I leave it up to you to figure out that a setup is converging or diverging. Once you know it's converging, that gives you the sign of the focal length. So you get a positive sign whenever it is a converging optical element. This is true if it's a lens, true if it's a mirror. Um, as long as it's converging, it's positive. What about the image distance? When should the image distance be positive? Or, you know, it is positive here now. So what would you point to and say this is why the image distance was positive? Further away than the focal point? 
Image is further away than the focal? And now the object was, yeah, but object was farther away than the focal point, but I don't really want to use that because I'm looking for a condition on the image, so I only want to refer to the image. If I have to refer back to the object, it's going to go through some layer of calculation, I don't want that. I only want to look at the image. When it's a real image, that's one way of saying it. All right, so let me ask you this question. How do you know when, a, when an image is real? Because we only deal with several situations, so we can have a feeling about it when a uh, uh, converting lens from an uh, image. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Let, let me move on to my next example. I, I think okay. I'm asking a question that no one here is ready to quite answer in a way that's satisfactory to me. So let me move on to the next example. Then we'll be able to clarify when, on, when we know an image is real. Yeah? So <laughs> we'll come back to this in a bit. So for now, real image, sure, that's fine. It's better than blank. So let me uh, go to our example two. So example two is the same as this converging lens. Example two. So it's a still converging lens, but the one change is that the object distance is now less than the focal length. You can kind of see that between these two examples, it covers all the possibilities with converging lens, right? At least when you have a real object. OK, good. So let's uh, do that. Um, I have, let's see, hmm, how should I draw this? I think this is how I should draw it. So converging lens here. Of some focal length. Oops. Uh, let's say it's the same focal length, no reason to make it complicated. Um, but this time the image will be somewhere inside the focal point. Let's uh, make it easy for myself or ourselves and say that the image is at distance, sorry, not image, object is at distance um, five centimeters away from the lens, half the focal length. OK, so once again, the question is, where is the image? What is the, once again, the question is, what is the image distance? What is the i? And what I would tell you, especially when you're starting out, is um, you know, when you're starting out, you have no intuition. Um, this lens equation is a good equation to always fall back on. It will always give you a result that is meaningful in some way. You may have to learn how to interpret it, but it will give you an answer that you can use. So that would be my first recommendation. Use this lens equation and see what you get. Um, now, I could go through all the algebra, but I feel like I already did that already, right? All the algebra I did here, none of that depended on what these values were, right? Yeah. So I can say, all right, uh, I'm just going to reuse this result. That's sort of one of the reasons to do things symbolically. <laughs> um, and I can say my image distance is equal to um, f the focal length times the object distance over the object distance minus focal length. That's equal to plug in the numbers, 10 times 5 over 5, mi oops, five minus 10. Mm. centimeters. So I get 50 on the numerator and minus 5 on the denominator. So 50 over minus 5. Oh, I don't, don't think I made it far enough away. Mm. Ah, let, that's fine. It's equal to minus 10 centimeters. Now, um, what, whatever do you think this minus sign means? It's from the same size object. You are thinking of maybe the location will be different, right? So that, that's a good intuition. So before, when this image distance was positive, 
it was on this side. It may be what's meant by the minus sign is it'll be on the other side. All right, let's, uh, um, so here's how you can verify it. You can draw your ray diagrams. And if your ray diagrams uh, show on uh, lines converging on this side, then um, I guess minus sign means something else. If the ray diagrams show the lines appearing to converge here, then, then that intuition was right. So let's uh, draw the ray diagram and see. I mean, uh, you know, I do rough enough numbers so that even doing it by hand, it should have come out right. So my first principal ray coming in parallel goes through the focal point. Uh, straight enough. <laughs> so that's the first uh, principal ray. The second principal ray goes through the middle of the lens and it goes straight. Uh, all right. So on this side, you can see that they are kind of diverging. So you will never see them cross each other on this side. So that's looking good. That means, that probably means if we extend this back, they will cross over here. So let's do that. Extend this back. And they cross. Yeah, I think I drew this focal point wrong. Whatever, my drawing is not very accurate. Um, so this is where the image forms. And this is the image distance, which, is, which we say is equal to minus 10 centimeters. So we keep this minus sign. Let's, say, let's see if the formulas we derived earlier are, are uh, still work. So we derived this formula with example one, that the magnification is minus di over do. And when the magnification was negative, we wanted the image to be inverted. And when the magnification is positive, we want the image to be upright. We have an upright image here. So um, hopefully this comes out positive. You plug in the numbers. So minus, minus 10 centimeter over um, five centimeter, you get plus two. I mean, here my drawing is once again not very accurate, but two seems reasonable within ballpark, right? So yeah, so the formula that we derived here, this formula works for greater range of situations than we might have imagined at the very beginning. Um, that's going to be a common theme with these formulas because with a proper sign convention, we can extend the usable range of these formulas to things that you didn't even imagine. So uh, let's circle back to the question that we had before. Um, so, one, so here, everyone agrees this is virtual image? Yes? So you might say that um, the image distance is negative, when the image is virtual, right? And you know, all of that's good when you are dealing with this simple situation. But once again, how, um, how would you know, let's say if you are looking at a ray diagram like this, and um, well, where are you? Let's see. No, I guess if you have ray diagram, then it's pretty easy to tell when your image is virtual because they don't actually come together and when they are real because they actually come together. So suppose you don't have ray diagram. All you know is um, you have object somewhere, you have lens somewhere, and all you know is where the image forms. It forms on one side or it forms on the other side. What one criterion would you use to say this uh, image is definitely real or this image is definitely virtual? The sign convention? The sign convention? Well, it's, uh, so we are trying to use the criterion that it's either real or virtual to determine the sign conventions. So let me uh, reform the question. So, so I guess this is where it matters. So here you are given the object uh, distance and then asked to work out the image distance, right? What if um, you are given it the other way? You are given the image distance and then you are asked to work out the object distance. 
And you might even be given the information this way. You are not given DI as a signed quantity from the beginning. Instead, you are told image forms at some distance away, and you are told where the image forms. Image forms on the right side of lens, or image forms on the left side of the lens. And from that, you have to figure out, so problem I tell you this, image forms 30 centimeters from the lens on the right side here, or image forms 30 centimeters from the lens on the left-hand side. From that information, you need to figure out, is it plus 30 centimeters or minus 30 centimeters? Like what criteria would you use? Um, you might know which side the original object is on. Okay, let's say you will always know where the light comes from. So you could say object is on the left hand side, which is another way of saying uh, the light comes in from left and goes out to the right. So let's say you do know that. It would be if it's on the same side as where the light comes in. Same side as where the light comes in. So that's a one way of describing. Let me do it the other way. So whether it's on the same side as the outgoing side. And I will explain why that little nitpick. So this is how I want to refine these initial guesses. Instead of saying the image distance is positive when it's a real image, I want to instead say image distance is positive. I mean, it's going to be the same thing as the real. It's just uh, uh, clear uh, how to apply it. It's on, when the image is on the same side as outgoing rays. Now, you might wonder, isn't this the same thing as opposite side of incoming rays? There's a slight difference. Let me explain that after I've replaced this. So instead of virtual, we would say, I still use the phrase outgoing side. So outgoing. So for vir virtual, it will be opposite side. So is it for a mirror? Yeah, it's uh, considering applying the same convention for the mirror that I'm being very careful in using this language. None of the physics textbooks I know are this careful. They uh, use um, other language that makes, <laughs> that forces them to come up with the two different sign conventions for lens and mirror. And I think it's counterproductive. You can use one sign convention for lens and mirror if you are careful in how you describe it. So in, in case you didn't, so this is what I want you to imagine. So this is what you saw with the lens, right? Outgoing side, real images here, all good. Now imagine you had, and this is the opposite from the incoming side. But imagine you had uh, this mirror here. Sorry, I'm not going to draw it because that diagram is already complicated. But imagine you had this converging mirror here. Then what you would get is these light rays would reflect off from it, and the real image would form somewhere here. And it's on the same side as incoming rays. So if you were describing this with the incoming rays, then you would be forced to flip the rules for mirror. And maybe you will remember which is which, but it's unnecessary confusion. If you describe the outgoing rays with the mirror, incoming side and outgoing side happens to be the same side. And if this was um, with this converging mirror, if this object were closer, your virtual image will deform on this side, which is the opposite from outgoing side. Okay? So that's the sign convention so far. Um, I guess, uh, so from last time, you guys know what, when f is negative, right? When is it negative? When it's diverging. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, do people want to see example three again? I guess I could do it again, but um, if all of this makes sense, I would rather reserve the time for something more fun. 